Yeah, I had a bit of a vacation, moving into a new place and all. And I know I said I would be breaking until September, but I decided to throw in a review for an NES game that I've been wanting to play for a while. That game being Kabuki Quantum Fighter, a fairly strange yet unheard of game with an extremely strange cover. It's probably why a lot of people pass this game up. Or maybe it's because of the odd title. In this action platformer, you play as a Colonel Scott Connor, attempting to shut down a computer system that suddenly went hostile. In order to do this, he volunteers to be put into an experimental device that projects his mind into the computer. Doing so transforms him into a Kabuki actor. This might seem completely random, but according to the game's story, this is because one of his ancestors was a Kabuki actor. I still don't understand why this is a specific ancestor that gets chosen, but we have to roll with it. So if you can get by that, then you'll enjoy this game. If you can't get by it, then you won't. Other than this little tidbit, the rest of the game regards Connor running through five zones, destroying the defenses of the computer system. There's some Ninja Gaiden style cutscenes in between each area, because this was 1991 and why the hell not. It's not nearly as engaging, but it's still better than many other stories crafted in this time frame. As far as the gameplay goes, Connor typically runs from left to right, but sometimes in vertical stages, destroying enemies with what else but his hair. Yep. He whips his hair around, damaging enemies with his deadly ponytail. Guess that could be some hardcore headbanging. So yeah, that's the main gimmick of the game. Hair as a weapon. Of course, that's not it though. You can crouch to punch, which does the same amount of damage, but has a much shorter range. When hanging from poles or ledges, you'll do an even shorter kick. But that's not the only weapon you have. There's also a secondary weapon series that uses an ammo called chips. At first, you only have a simple thrown projectile, but after each level, you earn a new one, from a fireball, spread shot, a grenade-like blast, and a weapon that tracks your enemy and hits them a few times. These weapons aren't entirely useful during the main stages, but during the boss fights they can mean survival. And what kind of enemies are you going to be slaying? Well, you'd think you'd go up against a bunch of robots, but that's not the case here. Instead, you'll be destroying horror-themed enemies, including disembodied jaws, strange alien-like hoppers, heads that shoot fireballs but have their brains exposed, and angry ninjas. Well, ninjas might not be horror-themed, but they're still present. Most enemies have a specific pattern and are easily figured out. In fact, the enemies themselves don't pose a lot of challenge, but there's still a lot of traps that you'll encounter that will prevent you from just rushing through the stages. In fact, other than the bosses, the platforming traps are really what gave me a hard time in Kabuki Quantum Fighter. Not so much as the final few stages, where you have to navigate a bunch of small platforms, swinging to each from the previous one, and dodging moved, spiked orb-like things. If you get hit, in normal fashion you'll fall backwards, and have to start the area over because there's no way to get back up to the ending platform other than backtracking. Not to mention that there's a few of the platforms that are also conveyor belts to make the jumping even more difficult. At least there's a 1-up easily obtained early in the stage, and it reappears after every death, just in case you really struggle. Let me talk about the swinging. Perhaps you've already seen that many of the platforms have two hooks underneath them. You can jump towards these and then hang from them. If you tap A, you'll simply hop from the ledge, but if you hold A, Connor will swing forcefully, propelling him much higher into the air. You will need to become an expert at swinging, because as I already mentioned, the final stage will really test you on your abilities, forcing you to try again if you happen to fail. Now, I will say that the controls do take some practice. The jumping just feels a bit stiff. All of Connor's other movements are fine, but the jumping is just plain off. Maybe it's because when you're in the air, you can press down and immediately cancel your leap and drop to the ground. I did this a few times during the final boss without even realizing it. I guess it could be a tactically good decision at times, but I didn't find it so. But I did want to mention it. The graphics of the game are just... strange. I already mentioned the odd enemy choices. The level designs go along with the enemies. Everything has an organic feel to it, which makes no sense whatsoever considering that you're supposed to be fighting inside of a giant computer. Only a small handful of stages feel appropriate to the story. Does this mean the game was intended to have a different plot? I didn't see any evidence on it, but I guess it could be a possibility. But other than that weird organic feel, the visuals are nice otherwise. Everything is dark, leading to a bleak atmosphere. The backgrounds are well drawn, with strange tentacles, beating hearts, screaming faces, and laughing skulls. You'll never really just see a bare black backdrop. Music is, again, I have no word for it other than strange. Level 1 starts off with a pretty catchy beat, but then goes into some strange dramatic theme. Don't get me wrong, it works well, but it's just odd. And it's not just the first stage. Each song is catchy, but just out there. 
At least the boss theme sounds somewhat normal and threatening. And that is Kabuki Quantum Fighter in a nutshell. It's one of those games that when you talk to people, they have either played it or they haven't. And those that have typically enjoy it. When I bought my Retron 5, it's one of the first games I obtained, and I come back to it somewhat frequently because for as strange as it is, it's just a fun game overall. Check it out. Final score, 8 out of 10. This is Reaper. Happy fragging.